So my girlfriend and I like to play Minecraft together, but we don't have an easy way to save our own custom world. I've also been wanting to get a Raspberry Pi for a while now, so in this video I figured I would solve both problems by setting up a Minecraft server on a Raspberry Pi. Let's do it. So we'll start off by assembling our components. So for the brains of the operation, I picked up a Raspberry Pi on eBay, and this is actually a Model 3 B+. And this is normally brand new, it's a $35 board, and it was $54 on eBay, so there are a bunch of shortages right now. So the Model 3 B Plus has a 1.4 GHz 64-bit quad-core processor, a gigabyte of RAM, dual-band wireless LAN, Bluetooth 4.2 BLE, faster Ethernet, and power over Ethernet support. So I picked up a couple micro SD cards on Amazon from SanDisk, and I also already have a micro USB cable that I can use for power. I also got a, wait for it, Lego Minecraft, ooh, oh. I need a cool case for the Raspberry Pi and I figure this is a good excuse to play with some Legos, go back to my roots and uh, yeah, have a little fun, make a cool case. So that should be about all we need to get started. Let's get this puppy set up and humming. All right, so to get started, we're gonna first plug in our micro SD card into a separate PC. So this is to load the Raspberry Pi OS. So we're gonna plug in our PC, get the Raspberry Pi image manager, and then load the operating system on the SD card because the Raspberry Pi can't boot without an OS. So we got this here. I got my little anchor SD card reader. So we're gonna go to the Raspberry Pi website and search for, or just do a Google search for the Pi imager, which makes it super easy to load the OS onto the SD card. Okay, downloads page, download for Windows, baby. You can do it on Mac, you can also do it on Linux. Okay, so first off, we're gonna choose the OS that we want. You can put a bunch of different OS's on the Raspberry Pi. Some of them are specifically for like game emulation, which is something I definitely wanna play with in the future. Um, there's other specific ones. I think you can put Kali Linux. You can put any, really any flavor of Linux, Ubuntu, whatever, but we're gonna go with the base Raspberry Pi OS, 32-bit which is a Debian um, Linux. So we got that loaded, and then we're gonna choose our storage device, which is the 32 gigabyte SanDisk SD card. And so this is the easiest imager. There's some other, some other options you can do. You can set up your username and password ahead of time. You can configure all the settings, um, but we're gonna save that for actually going through the OS setup, and we're just gonna hit write. And it's gonna clear the disk. So yes, we wanna continue. And we will twiddle our thumbs while this writes. Maybe maybe we'll go bake a uh, Raspberry Pi. All right, so it is writing, and once it's done, it'll show, uh, Windows will show that you need to format the disk. Don't do that because this, this operating system won't be, it's Linux, so it won't be able to be recognized by Windows once you put the actual OS on the card. Okay, so it's gonna take a little bit to verify that the, the changes were written to the disk. And then once that is done, We'll be able to eject the SD card. Yeah, this is gonna come up where you ask to format. You don't wanna do that because it will, uh, it'll just format all the changes you just made. Okay, you can now remove the SD card from the reader. Perfect. So now we're gonna go over to our Raspberry Pi here. We're gonna add our SD card. And now we gotta set up all of our IO. So we're gonna use HDMI, a micro USB cable, and then I need to swap my, uh, my USB as well. It takes just like a second for the Raspberry Pi to boot up. All right, so now that our Raspberry Pi is rebooted, the very first thing we wanna do is we wanna go open up a terminal and we are going to put sudo hostname dash capital I. So that's gonna give us our IP address of a Raspberry Pi, 192.168.0.7. Now we need to make a mental note of that because that's how we'll actually connect to the Minecraft server with that IP and then a port. So now that we've done that, we get to the fun part, which is actually setting up the Minecraft server. And to do that, we're gonna use a software package called Nukit, um, N-U-K-K-I-T, I believe. Um, and so first off, the first thing we gotta do is we gotta install the Java uh, development environment. 
All right, so to do that, we're gonna put sudo apt install default dash JDK. That'll give us the latest version of the Java development. You wanna continue, hit yes, and let it do its thing. All right, so that's all set. And now we're going to set up a new directory for our Minecraft server. So we're gonna do make directory. I'm gonna call it MC server. Okay, we got that. And then we're going to change directory, so CD into that new folder. All right, so now we can set up the NuKit uh, server software. And I've got the uh, URL here. Okay, so we'll paste that in, which I'll put that in the description. And then it is going to grab that NuKit ser Minecraft server software. Boom, done. So next, we are going to actually start the NuKit server. So sudo java dash jar nukit dot jar this is going to actually start up our java server so welcome please choose a language english so these will set up all of the properties for the nukit server and then we're going to be able to edit those properties because there's a few tweaks that we want to make before we actually start playing okay so that's all done technically the nukit server is running um, it shows that it's running on 0.0.0.0-19132 port, which is going to be just the default, which is fine. We'll leave that. And instead of those four zeros, we're going to use that 192.168.0.7 address, which is the address of our Raspberry Pi. Um, but before we do any of that, we're going to open up the server properties. So sudo nano server.properties. Nano is a, a text editor. Oops, we gotta stop the server first. Stop the server. Okay, now we're in that directory. We can open up the server properties, sudo nano server.properties. Okay, so these will show us all of, this will show us all of our different properties that we can change. Um, if you wanna set the IP, but you can just leave it as is and you'll be able to connect um, with the local IP of the Raspberry Pi. One thing that I would set is max players. Um, if you have one of the newest Raspberry Pis, it might be okay with 20, but because I have the three, um, I'm going to set it, not 30, I'm going to set it to 10. Um, memory is going to be an issue <laughs> with this thing. I mean, it's not, you're not going to be able to host a bunch of players at once, um, but for a couple of your friends, it should, it should be able to do just fine. There's some other uh, modes you can set, some game modes, but we're just going to leave that as is, and we're going to go ahead and exit, save our changes, and there we go. And now to actually start our server, we're just gonna do the same command that we did before. So sudo java dash jar nuke it dot jar. Boom. Takes a little bit to set up. Okay, it loaded our world and our server is up and running. So now that our Minecraft server is all set up, all ready to go, I'm itching to play. But first, we're gonna set up a little home for our, our Raspberry Pi. So in order to play on our new server, we first have to download Minecraft Bedrock Edition as Java isn't supported on NuKit. We then go to add server, connect via the local IP and port we marked down earlier, and voila, we are in our own Minecraft server running on a Raspberry Pi. Awesome. So that was super fun. I learned a ton about using the Raspberry Pi. I definitely want to work on some different projects in the future and honestly play with more Legos. I miss being a kid. So if you enjoyed, 
make sure to like and subscribe down below. It helps out the channel and I greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.